Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Grand Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. We have arrived at a new season and uh, you might have noticed that it's been a while since I posted a new video. That's because I just got married, if you didn't know already. I just got back from my honeymoon, so that also means that I didn't get a lot of time to experiment with the changes in the previous patch. But that means that we're going to just take a look at one of the meta decks that we kind of left behind in the previous month. So today we're going to be looking at Squiretel, more specifically to Spellatel. So the uh, the Squiretel spell focused deck, special card focused deck that we've seen a lot of and how you should be playing this. So let's head into the deck builder first. So I titled this deck the Precision Spells deck, but uh, basically it is the meta deck version from our snapshot from last month. So exactly that, you can find the list over there as well. You can check out all the other lists as well. There hasn't been that many changes in the previous patch, so most of those decks are still very, very viable. But today we're going to be looking at this list that uses the Precision Strike leader ability, allowing you to uh, deal some damage and create those uh, Broccolon Sentinels on the board but uh, yeah we're gonna go through each and every single part of this deck one by one as usual if you're not interested but just want to see how this deck works in action you can skip ahead to the example matches and of course we start with those Broccolon Sentinels immediately so two power and on deploy they damage an enemy unit by two if you kill something with that damage, you summon all copies of this unit from your deck to this row. Remember, your leader ability has a Broccolon Sentinel as well. So if you can keep these two Broccolon Sentinels in your deck and then just use your leader ability effectively, you can have three of them on the row in one go and just tint out your deck immediately. Then we have one Elven Scribe just to fill up that four provision slot, but an Elf that starts at four power and has three counters and whenever you play a special card one of the counters gets removed whenever the counter well when that counter reaches zero he boosts himself by six so giving you 10 points if you manage to pull this off but usually this guy is going to get locked before that or destroyed before that then we have double tempering a nature card that allows you to boost an ally by five and if it's a dwarf you also give it to armor we barely have any dwarfs so there's only one dwarf of course in a deck like this gourd so uh, usually it's just going to be a five point boost then we have one Dryad's Caress giving you a Purify option, a nature card that purifies an allied unit and boosts it by three. And if you also have a Dryad on the field, uh, either the Broccolon Sentinels or uh, Fov, you also give that unit vitality for three turns. So six points and a Purify and of course also counting as a special card for Gort. Then we have the Whisperer of Dol Blatana, a three power elven mage that has Veil and whenever you play a special card you spawn and well, not play, you just spawn a base copy of herself on the same row and remove a counter. She can only do that once, but of course the copy that she spawns can do this again, giving you a train of elven whispers. Um, very, very handy to give you some extra pizzazz to all of your special cards. Now we have the Elven Seer, you're going to see this uh, quite a lot. There's going to be three specific elves that kind of work in conjunction. So we saw the Whisperer, we now have the Elven Seer, so four power. And whenever you target this unit with a bronze special card, you spawn and play a copy of that same special card. Um, this only happens once because this card also has only one counter but uh, there's a few options that this uh, card really works well with for example if your opponent locks this card you can use the uh, Dryad's Caress card that we just talked about with a Purify to purify this card and immediately trigger it causing you to play another Dryad's Caress uh, giving you some very fancy combos if it works out as intended. And then the third Elven Mage that we're talking about is the Sorceress of Dol Blatana. Also starts at 4 power and on order, so you need to wait a turn to pull this off. You create and play a Bronze Squiretel special card with a provision cost equal to or lower to her power. So if she gets damage to below 4 power, she won't be able to pull this ability off. But of course you can boost her and then use the ability again. If you manage to get her to 6, you can get another Orb of Insight in play, which is going to be what we're going to try and achieve here. But before we talk about the Orbs of Insight, we have a few other special cards to talk about. There's one Circle of Life in this deck, damage an enemy unit by 3, then boost a random Squirtail unit in your hands by 2. If you kill a unit with that 3 damage, you can choose whatever unit in your hand 
needs to be a score tell unit, but you can choose which one gets the boost. Then of course, Nature's Rebuke can't be omitted in a deck like this, just a damager for five damage in one go on an enemy unit. If you kill that unit, you also boost a random ally three and by two. There is only one three and in this deck, the forest protector. So uh, usually we'll only have that five damage. And now we have the Orbs of Insight that I was talking about. This is the very, very special card that most of this deck is built around. You boost an allied unit by two and give it to Vitality. Only four points for a six provision special card might sound a bit weird, but while in your graveyard you remove the counter by one whenever you play a special card. Again, this card has a counter of three, and when the counter reaches zero, you play this card again. So basically giving you two special cards for the price of one. You also give it then Dune, so it can't be used again. But remember, we can get some more with the Elven Seers. We can get some more with the Dolblatana Sorceress. So uh, there's definitely a lot of options here. There's two in the deck, and it's advised to use Simlas to pull them out in one go. We'll talk about Simlas in a minute. Then of course we have Harold Gort, the finisher of this deck. There's a lot of cards that uh, allow you to pull him from the deck if you wouldn't have pulled him. So there's an AMNC and there's Isengrim's Council, which is guaranteed to pull Gort, since he's the only dwarf in the deck, but starts at three power and on deploy he boosts himself by zero, but you increase the boost by one for every special card you played this game, which is of course gonna be a lot. Gort is gonna surpass 20 points most of the time that you play this deck. Now we have Fov, the other Dryad in this deck, 2 power, but basically a tutor card for any nature card in your deck. Remember, it needs to be a nature card, so be careful, the Orbs of Insights are spells or Neromancy as well, so there's a limited selection of nature cards that you have, but you do pull another one from the deck, so again, a unit that plays a special card. Now we have Isengrim's Council, basically the other way around, so a nature card that allows you to play either a Dwarf, a Dryad or an Elf from your deck, you play one and you boost it by two. So it gives you a selection of one of each category randomly from your deck. The Dwarf is always going to be Gord, the Dryad can either be the Brooklyn Sentinel or Fov, and the Elf is going to be basically everything else because everything else in this deck are Elves. Now and of course we have Karate Heatwave, we need a tall removal card in this deck because we don't have any other options um, aside from that. So we banish a unit or an artifact. Simple as that, a special card that just allows you to select any card on the board and say bye bye to it. There we have the Forest Protector, there we have the tree and a 5 power monstrosity for 11 provisions that allows you to play a bronze nature card from your graveyard. 9 times out of 10 this is gonna be... Um, Nature's Rebuke, but of course you can also replay Circle of Life or Dryad's Caress or Tempering. So always going to be 10 points, but uh, with Nature's Rebuke just a little bit more. And now we have Simlas, the uh, new legendary card for Squire Tell. Simlas, Finn, Ep, the Bear. Uh, starts at 2 power for 12 provisions, but on deploy he plays all copies of a bronze special card from your deck. So if you do that with the Orbs of Insight and you already have an Elven Seer on the board, you immediately gain 3 Orbs of Insight that are in your graveyard. And they are stacked, so they count each other as well as special cards that have been played. So that allows you to only need it to play one more special card for your other Orbs of Insight to come back from the graveyard. So this is a very, very powerful setup card. If you have two Elven Seers on the board, you just keep them coming the Orbs of Insight, because you can, uh, yeah, then you generate four Orbs of Insight, which means that the final Orb of Insight will trigger the first one again, and you get eight special cards in a single round, which is, uh, what well, single turn, which is uh, incredible, of course, but this guy is amazing. And then, of course, for consistency's sake, we have Oneromancy, a spell that we can use twice that allows us to play any card from your deck, so Twice, I mean it's an echo card, meaning that at the end of the round it will go from the graveyard back to the top of your deck, give doomed, and then of course you can use it again. And then the final card in this deck is the scenario card, so Fain Death for 14 provisions. It's a scenario card that progresses whenever you play an elf. Starts with a Vernosial's Commando, uh, which is a card that gains a point whenever you, uh, well, at the end of every turn, as long as you only have elven units on the board. Uh, whenever you play another elf, you get two elven dead eyes, so another six points. And then for the final elf, you spawn and play Wele, which is of course another special card, which you can use to damage an enemy unit by three and spawn an elven dead eye on the same, not on the same row, a random row, if you manage to kill the unit that you were targeting. So a lot of points in that as well, and the plentitude of elves that are in this deck will definitely be able to trigger it. 
And then our stratagem is, of course, tactical advantage. Just boosting an allied unit by five can be used for a variety of reasons. Like, for example, giving a uh, Goldblood on a Sorceress enough power to get an Orb of Inside out or anything else that you want to boost. And then once more, our leader ability is Precision Strike, allowing you to damage a unit by one three times. So three separate times, you have three charges for this ability. And once all charges are used up, you immediately spawn and play a Broken on Sentinel. So keep that in mind. That third charge is also going to trigger that Broken on Sentinel. And you really want to have something of two or one power to kill. So you can pull the rest of your Sentinels out of the deck and thin your deck even further. Because this deck is actually set up in a way that allows you to thin like to four to five cards which is really really good for consistency's sake so uh yeah with that being said let's head into a few example matches to see how you use this deck okay so next up is against reckless flurry this might be interesting that means that we really need to win round one which might be difficult um but we'll see how things work out it might be the new version actually with uh yeah with some of the more hideous combos in the game um let's get rid of brooklyn sentinels and orbs of insight as usual and we're looking at quite a good starting hand this time at least i'm hoping our opponent doesn't forfeit immediately or loses their connection because this has been one hell of a recording session even despite the one match that you already saw i had one disconnection and one absolute troll so great recording session so far but I'm here to give out some explanations about this deck, so I'm hoping we can finally get to some juicy combos. And we immediately start with Avalok Sage, they're probably getting Portal, yeah, into two Bear Witchers. So they're going to be pushing this hard. Um, which means that I should probably do the same thing. Um, there's no real good starting point here now. Because usually I start with a Sorceress or an Elven Seer, but we don't seem to have either of them. So what I'm going to do is try and get just an Elven Scribe out first. We already have Gord in hand, so we might as well benefit from that. So let's just get the Elven Scribe. We're on the back foot this time. We start uh, on red coin, so we don't necessarily need to win round one. But it would be nice. And then we get an Uncreate Greatsword, which might be immediately boosted. No, of course, they're going to give him the boost immediately like this. Okay, so the great swords are gonna create a lot of extra points unless I stop them here, which I think is what I'm going to do. There's not many other opportunities where this is gonna come in handy, so I'm actually gonna use two charges of precision strike to take out that great sword, um, reducing the counter of our elven scribe by one, and of course, also getting rid of that great sword, which would have otherwise been strong enough to. Um, well, just, just survive and be used on a, with a Megascope. Um, so I basically got rid of at least three points. Because of course I can still use the Bear Witchers. And there we get armor up and the Elven Scribe is gone. Okay, I don't pack Lacerate in this version. It would have come in really handy right now. But what else can we do? There's not much we can do actually. Uh, there's a lot of good cards still in our deck. We still have a couple of Elves, so I'm going to try using Isengrim's Council. Yeah, let's get an Elven Seer on the board right now. So the Elven Seer only where... Oh, wow. Just karate that thing, right? Okay. Fair enough. Um, but I really want to win this first round. Um, so I am going to go all out here. I don't know if it's the best decision. But... Yeah, it is going to be... It is going to have to be this. I'm gonna just go for the scenario card in one go now. Um, we're just far enough ahead in the match for this to still work. Because we can definitely just use two more cards. And then work from there. We'll see what happens. Because Karate is gone, so they can get rid of the um, scenario card. So that means that we're guaranteed to get more points and I think our opponent knows this because they're going for Maxi now. Uh, Maxi is kind of the card that gives you the extra benefit of checking the remainder of your deck. But we don't have the Elven Seer so we can't double up on the Orbs of Insight so that is a little bit sad. But we're still going to be able to do most of the combo unless of course our Whisperer is now destroyed in which case I think we should probably pass. Aha, uh -huh. and we don't actually get hits. 
it's something that bad. I mean, it's still um, 10 points, but... Okay, uh, let's use Simlas now. Simlas can go on the Orbs of Insight, of course. Uh, we also get Waylay, so Waylay is another special card. It's going to go on to one of those Witcher students. We get another Elven Deadeye, and then we can start boosting the, um, the other Deadeyes over here with the Orbs of Insight. And we're almost back in the game. So we're about four points away from that, which is just one, uh, one card that we need to use. So because of that beast now on our side of the board, the Venusial's Commando isn't helping anymore. Um, and that Witcher, yeah, the Trial of the Grasses did hurt a little bit. Um, I'm actually going to use Circle of Life. Yeah, because I we were guaranteed to which card is going to get boosted in hand, so it's going to be Gord. So we can just do this. We get another two points from the uh, Elven Dead Eyes. We're still far enough ahead, and our opponent is going all out. Qu Geralt Quen is coming in with the Bear School, which is it. That's going to kill off the Whisperer, and that's basically the end for us. Meaning that we still have the Orbs of Insight um, in the graveyard here. So one of them is at counter one, which means that next time we will be able to pull those out. So I'm going to pass now, because we're basically pretty well set up for the next round. But sadly, we didn't take round one which will give our opponent the opportunity to reset our gourd. Okay, so that was round one. I think we pulled out most of what we could, but we did waste our two best cards on this first round and we didn't even take it. Uh, we do still get on Aeromancer, so that's the consistency that we need. And other than that, I'm gonna get rid of the Brooklyn Sentinels. We get another Elven Seer, which is actually not bad. And then Dryad's Caress away for Falve. So if our opponent doesn't pass, we can use another Elven Seer. If they do, I might actually go for the exact same thing. Although I could use Falv to just get rid of another special card. So yeah, there they go. Falv is better. Although if I just get rid of one of the four provision cards, that gives us more opportunity to... I could do the same with Oneiromancy, but Oneiromancy gives us the opportunity to get something else out. So I'm just going to use Falv and then use uh, Dryad's Caress, because I won't be able to use it efficiently after. Although I could with the Brooklyn Sentinels. But now, of course, we do... Oh, I kind of forgot about the Orbs of Insight, yeah. That was not that smart now, was it? Yeah, I kind of made the mistake I told myself not to. I told you guys not to. Not to use a special card in this round. Yeah, kind of forgot about that. I should have just played the Elven Seer. Because now I wasted a lot of point potential in that final round. We do get our two uh, gold cards here, so this is basically a perfect hand. I'm not going to change anything about that, so let's just finish redrawing. So let's start out with the Elven Seer. If we get lucky, we might be able to use Tempering on that card twice, but I don't think she will survive. There we go, Giga Scorpion the Coction. What the hell did I just say? It's Giga Scorpion the Coction. Yeah, that was what I wanted to say, so let's just use the Sorceress of Dolblatana next. She will be able to uh, do some magic if we get the chance. Because it might be that we don't get the chance, but that's that's going to be sad then. So, there's two options here. Either they damage the card and kill it, in which case, of course, nothing happens. Um, or they damage it enough so it is damaged. So, like this, if they don't do it again. They don't do it again. Okay, so this is the, the thing that I wanted to do. So we can use Tempering on the Sorceress of Dol Blatana since they kept her alive. And then I can use her ability to get lucky with an Orb of Insight and use that on her as well. So that's going to put her at 10 points, which is quite a lot. But yeah, it's better than the alternative. Do they still have a Megascope? They get Hjalmar and Hjalmar is of course going to kill... Yeah, that. This is not looking good. Um, I'm gonna use the Whisper now. She's probably gonna die anyway. I can't just leave her there, because otherwise a Reckless Flurry would take care of that in one go. So I'm gonna use my leader ability to take out Hjalmar over here and get all the Brooklyn Sentinels out of our deck. I should have not fucked up those Orbs of Insight in the second round. That was my huge mistake there. Because Gord is basically a useless card right now, because Gord is going to get countered by Geralt's um, Axie. 
Because this is the classic Reckless Flurry deck. It's not the new one with Arnegat. Yeah, we get Megascope. So Megascope is another 10 points. Um, I could use Nature's Rebuke, which is probably the best thing to do here. We get another Whisperer for our troubles, but our opponent is going to get 10 points in a minute, so they're already ahead. And they get Heron Kadoog, of course, able to kill the uh, Whisperer there. It's going to be another 3 damage and another hit for the... Okay, so they're going to keep the Greatsword alive, which is good for me. I'm going to use the Force Protector now to use Nature's Rebuke on that Greatsword. It's something. Silver Linings. Silver Linings. But yeah, Gord is going to die anyway, regardless of whether it's going to be 21 or nothing. So Karate is going to be 10. Uh, and Gord is going to be 21, so there's 31 points incoming. But yeah, Axie is just going to negate all of that. Oh yeah, why not? <sighs> Oh, we got another herb of too. How would you do that before using... Oh, wow. Okay, never mind. I kind of gave up. I don't know if you saw, but I was fully expecting Geralt Axie there. So, this was not earned. We didn't, we didn't earn that. Um, they just got unlucky that Junot was their final card. So remember that those Orbs of Insight and that setup would have been way better in the final round than we would have even won with uh, Geralt Axie. But yeah, that was I kind of gave up there. <laughs> I even stopped commentating. That's why we just skipped ahead to the end. Um, yeah, that was... Let's try another match because th this was... I mean, you saw what you shouldn't do. If you have those Orbs of Insight lined up like that, don't use the pass rounds to play another special card and waste your orbs of insight, because that's uh, gonna cost you. But I got really lucky here. Let's be honest about that. Okay, next match is versus Arakos. So I don't have any rogue clears in this deck, so that might be problematic, but we can still take out a few of them with um, our leader ability, although we probably don't want to do that too much. Our starting hand is actually pretty good. I don't want to be careful with my mulligans now, because of course there's still three cards in our deck that I don't want to have. But since we have two mulligans left, I'm going to try it anyway. Uh, so let's get rid of the Elven Scribe, which is going to get destroyed anyway, and that is good. I'm not going to attempt fate any more than that. Yeah, there we go. Let's just do that. Okay. So a pretty good starting hand. The only thing that we're really missing is like a Sorceress. Although I don't really need them right now, I think. If I start with an Elven Seer, it is risky, because of course this could have Predatory Dive, but I haven't seen any Arakas Swarm decks with Predatory Dive. And we get the Crimson Curse, giving them 10 points, and of course a lot of bleeding on our side of the field. I could do the big combo with Simlos now already, but I think it's going to be a bit of a waste. So I'm going to see... If I can get lucky with a Sorceress. So if I put a Sorceress down here with an Aeromancy. Is that going to die? Probably. It's definitely going to die to a natural selection or something like that. But now the Elven Seer is definitely bleeding. So she's going to get hit by two points as well. Which is kind of what I was hoping for. Because if this doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I can get another Orb of Insight from that Sorceress. And I think that's why our opponent is kind of hesitating right now. Because it looks like a bit of a weird play at the moment. Okay, and we just get a Griffin. So that's just a basic point slam play. So I can do Tempering on the Sorceress. But I can also do Whisperer of Dolblatana now. And not have... Yeah, the Whisperer is going to be better. Um, so I can use her now like this and I could actually just use tempering on yeah use tempering on the elven seer and then tempering on the whisperer doll but then it doesn't really matter so we generate a lot of points in one go with just bronze cards so there we go basically yeah over 30 points with three bronze cards which is always good and then we get hideous feast of course which was to be expected those uh whispers are definitely vulnerable to that uh, so we're not going to get extra points from our... Ooh, that was a nice change, because otherwise I could have passed. Uh, so we're not going to be getting any extra points from the Whispers here. So might as well 
just circle of life the Ekimaras over there and then just boost the second Whisper in my hand so it gets a little bit higher but yeah we're already at equal points now because of the bleeding and the extra damage because the seer is bleeding so the next hit of the blood moon is going to definitely damage her and i also realized that i should have put the whisper on this row so the bleeding could hit the veil constantly so that is exactly what i'm going to do now actually i'm going to put the second whisper over there so i can definitely overtake our opponent in the final card because they're maxiing so they're preparing for the next round and the next bleeding hit could go on the Whisper. And if they pass, then we can set up with Simnos as well. Even though we didn't get the extra Orbs of Insight then. So I don't think they have removal for it, or it must be Parasite. I think Parasite is still in there. Yeah, there we go. Parasite is out. And that means we're definitely getting Bled again. Um, so Simnos right now is going to be 10 points, which is just enough. Do I want to set it up here? I do still have quite a lot of good cards next, although I don't have a lot of elves left to get the scenario out. Um, so I think I am going to pass at 5. Which means that our opponent actually has the chance to do a tempo play in a minute if they run Yennefer in this deck, which I'm not really sure that they have. We don't have Karate Heatwave yet. Which would be handy if our opponent has Glusty, which they most definitely have. So Karate would be nice, but with Onarimans we have Karate guaranteed, so we can get whatever we want. There we go, Karate. Uh, second Elf is also interesting. We don't have a Dryad just yet, although we could with our Leading Ability. Let's get rid of Dryad's Caress, we get an Orb of Insight, that's not good. Oh, we get, of course, a Brooklyn Sentinel. Okay. Okay, that is not that good. Not that good at all. Um, which means that I should probably, if our opponent doesn't just pass, use the... Yeah, they definitely don't pass, so that's going to be a griffin on top of that. Weavis. Okay, let's get the elven scribe out first. We can definitely get an older elf with um, Isengrim's Council, but I want to keep that for Gort, of course. Um... But I don't want to overplay just yet either. So that's nine points that we need to get over. We also don't, don't have a Nature's Rebuke right now. Because otherwise I could have done that. I'm just going to play the Elven Scribe. Yeah, let's play the Elven Scribe. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But our opponent now has the chance to pass and get card advantage in the next round. So they could do that or they could just continue playing. And then I have enough with just the tempering. Okay, and we get a pause, uh, which means that with tempering and one hit of our leader ability, we can actually get out of this. So let's just uh, boost the Elven Scribe and then hit just one thing over there and we're through our pickle. So two bronze cards lost for four provisions and we still have our most powerful cards in the deck. Well, at least one of them is still in the deck. We have one in hand. We get an Elven Seer, which is good. Orb of Insight, less good. We get Gourds. So now we need to be extremely lucky with our mulligans because we don't want to get either of the other sentinels or orbs of insight. And we get a second sentinel, of course. Of course, this deck is really annoying in that front. I think it's probably better to maybe use some loss earlier, but... Okay. So first things first, that Elven Seer is really interesting, but right now we can't really do something with that. So let's just Oneromancy the Fame Death card right over there. And we get our first Vernal Seals Commando for four points. And now we get Karate Heatwave, of course, because that's that's how, exactly how this, this game works. If you play a scenario card, you get Karate Heatwave. Not a problem at all, let's just continue playing as we were supposed to. So Elven Seer first. If that stays alive, we get three Orbs of Insight, but it starts to sound like we're not going to get that combo in any of these matches, are we? And we get a Predatory Dive now, there, there it is. There it is. I was... Ah, oh, come on. I could still do um, Isn't Games Council now. So let's do that first. Yeah, there's no real point in delaying that. So let's just do Isn't Games Council on the Sorceress of Dolblatana. Since our opponent played a Griffin, I'm fairly certain that Mamuna is in that deck. And that's just a Frightener. I can take that out now, right? With a 
Koyati. But that seems like bait. That definitely seems like bait. So let's just play Simlas next. Simlas can do his fancy thing with the Orbs of Insight and just boost himself and Sorcerer's Dol Blatana. And then I hope I get another one. And I do. I do get another one. So we can put that on the Nocial's command. No, no, let's not put those at equal. That's going to hurt. So let's just put all the vitality on Simlas. So I could take out the Frightening, but I'm wondering if they're setting it up for Glusty. And if they're playing Glusty too early, I can still destroy it with Karate Heatwave. I'm guessing they won't, but it is still an option. So there it goes. Um, do I, I still don't have... I don't think I... What nature cards do I have? I have Tempering, I have Circle of Life, but I don't have a Nature's Rebuke. They wouldn't be that stupid to play Glusty early, would they? I'm just gonna... Let's play Nature's Rebuke first, because that ends it up in the graveyard. And now I get my Orbs of Insight back. Uh, so I can just put that on these guys. It's going to be one turn too many on Sim loss, vitality-wise, but I don't really care about... No, it's not. It's actually just enough. That's good. Because I really want to avoid putting those two at equal points. That would be really bad. Which they might actually end up at, now that I'm realizing that. Because the Venusil's Commando keeps boosting herself. Now that's going to be a bitch, isn't it? Okay, I've got Brewers with another Consume. Which makes it look like they're going to... Because the Frightener is 12, right? Yeah. Because that gains immunity, so I can't actually destroy it afterwards. So if I now Karate Heatwave it, there's no way of that to get back, but then I don't have Karate Heatwave for anything else. And right now it's only two points in difference, so... Let's just leave it at that right now. And yeah, I know now Venossal's Commando is not going to boost anymore, so there won't be at equal points. Fair enough. The good thing is that their Karate Heatwave is already gone. So... That's good news. So now they need to damage the unit by 6, okay. That's actually fine, because now I can use Precision Strike once. And then use the Forest Protector to get that Nature's Rebuke out. I don't know what th what this is. It, it's like Dark cards. So it's probably a bug some, <laughs> somewhere. I mean, I've been away for a while, so I don't know. And there we go. There's the, uh, the Frightener. Because I killed a unit and that was the third unit that needed to be destroyed. So 21 points ahead, but two cards behind. And there we got Kaeron, which is forced to actually destroy something. So Karati is now useless. So I'm going to have to play Gord first, which might actually make my leading ability useless now as well. That is going to be interesting. I also put Gord on the wrong row. If they have another, if they have Geralt Urn, I'm totally fucked. But So if they now play something that is not immune, I can still target that, but this is not looking good. I should have killed that Frightener when we, uh, when we started. And we got Spontaneous Evolution. That's actually good because that gives them a few extra targets. Um, that I can use. Yeah, that is a-okay. What the hell are they doing? They're already putting them down. Okay, that's just rubbing it in, I feel like. So let's, um, kill one. Then use this and this. And then Karelti is just five. Which is fine, because there's two more cards left in our opponent's hand. If it's Erden and Glusty, I'm going to be mad, but right now it's 20, uh, 34 points difference. So that's Glusty, it's going to be 16 points. And the next one is hopefully not Erden. Oh, it's Geralt Igni, it's just bad, but I think we still won. Yeah, we still won, because I didn't row stack those two 14s, that would have been really, really bad. Okay, there we go, another match won. Uh, the right way this time with uh, a few of the combos left and we got uh, at least three orbs of insight That was fine, right? That was still a, a juicy gourd 18 points um, But yeah, you could go a lot higher if you manage to get orbs of insight from the sorceresses from the seers But most of the matches that we've played our opponents were really good in taking those out preemptively So that's it for this deck uh, now I'm the first to admit that I 
definitely made a few mistakes in these matches, but I think that's useful for you to also see in these matches. That's why I usually also don't cut those things out as certain other people might do in their videos. Because I feel like you can learn from that as well. Don't make the same mistakes I did. So for example, with that one match, don't set up your Orbs of Insight if you're then gonna accidentally play another special card in the round that your opponent passes. Because then of course, you are forced to play all those Orbs of Insight. And in that case, that was about eight extra points that just were lost completely that I could have used in that final round. We still got lucky and won that round, but um, yeah, it would have been way better if I saved that up. You definitely need to be careful with your positioning as you saw in that last match. Um, don't stack your very high powered units, especially if your opponent is really good at taking out those lower power units. Uh, you definitely don't wanna stack those all those points on the same row. Um, other than that, I think you saw the most important combo, so Fane that usually got destroyed in our case, but you get another special part from that at the very end, but you need to Elves, remember that. Um, other than that, you have Simnos into the Orbs of Insight. If you have an Elven Seer on the board, or even two, that's even better, you can put those Orbs of Insight on the Elven Seer and get another one in return. And then of course the Whisker of Dolblatana, you need to place that on a completely empty row or mostly empty row and just see that swarm growing and growing because it's a really good addition to everything else that deck does great. And then at the very end you need to get Gord um, either in your hand, either with Onairomancy or of course with Isengrim's Council, which can also be pulled by Falf. So you have four ways of getting Gord, which I think should be more than enough. So uh, there we go, the Precision Spells deck. And there we have it, hope you guys enjoyed this very new deck guide, well for me at least because the deck has been out for a while. In our meta snapshot from Team Elderblood, you can check that out in the description down below, the link is over there. We're, gonna, we're, reading, we're getting really close to updating that as well to the new patch, so keep an eye out, it's going to be basically the same link that will be updated. So uh, a lot of new decks are incoming as well, well slightly updated ones, I'll... Uh, Put it like that so yeah i'm back from my honeymoon so i'm gonna have a bit more time to make new deck guides i have a few other ideas that will definitely make it onto this channel uh, and there's still one faction that we haven't looked at since the uh, previous patch as well uh, and that is of course northern realm so we're going to be looking at that really really soon as well even though it's universally viewed as the weakest faction at the moment we will be taking a look at all the mages again because we're going to go back into a spell fire kind of deck. So look forward to that. Uh, I'm really pleased to be back and I hope to see you in the next video, in the next deck guide of Quentin. So thank you guys enormously for watching and uh, stay nutty. Goodbye. Yeah,